So, Jason Kleep, I'm here with you at NC Fit HQ in Campbell, California. Yep. We just wrapped up a two-day summit for the NC Fit Collective. You had about 50, 60 gym owners here from around the country, one international. Tell me a little bit about what you guys have been doing for the last two days and talking with a lot of these members. Yeah, I mean, so the guests that we invited or that they actually applied are part of our NC Fit Collective. So what the collective is, is our session plans, our programming, our coaching tools that we use for our own staff we now uh, sell it to other gyms. And so we put out a message to them saying, hey, we're gonna have this summit where we talk about rising the tides, you know, breaking down barriers, building your business, building your coaching. Uh, if you wanna apply, go ahead and apply here. So we had um, you know, a bunch of gyms apply. We chose ones from different areas in the country, different sizes, different financial positions, just to get a well-rounded group here. And uh, yeah, for the last couple of days, we started off with some drinks and some stuff on Friday night. Saturday was a morning ruck, like sunrise ruck. It was really cool. The guys from Go Ruck came out here and did it. Then we went through, you know, strategy and coaching and lectures and business and lunch. And, and then we did a dinner event at the 49ers Stadium. It was, it was just a really cool. And then today I uh, had some EC come in, talk about nutrition, I had some specialists come in, discuss different things. And it's been amazing, man. It's been amazing. Awesome. So last two days, what would you say is like one of the big takeaways inside of the fitness industry that you guys would try to impart on these gym owners as they're going to go back to their own gyms and, and try and implement it? What's, what's like a big thing? I mean, the big thing is, is that they sometimes feel like they're in a silo and the industry has evolved a lot over the years and we need to look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves if our business isn't where it needs to be, ourselves included, we have an obligation to go out there and make some changes to take it to where we want it to go. And we can't just assume doing the same thing over and over again, we'll get a different result. That was the big takeaway for these guys, just letting them know, hey, you know, we're giving you resources for your session plans, your coaching, all these different tools, but also on the business side, what are you doing to attain new members, retain good coaches, and those are the things we talked about. So you're talking to gym owners all the time, not just the ones inside of your collective that are working directly with your team, but just gym owners in general, you're traveling the world. What's like a big piece of feedback that they're constantly giving you? They're like, we need this or we need this. What is that that they're saying? The, the, I mean, a lot, but in a nutshell, they don't know what they don't know. Meaning like some of them aren't zoned properly, don't have partnership agreements. Those are big challenges on the business side. They don't even know they're a big challenge until it comes up. But what they do know is that they've gotten to 150 to, uh, you know, 115 to 150 members and they've stalled out and they don't know why. And what it is, is I think it's this revolving door process where you're coaching six to eight hours a day and you're, you're burnt out. And what you need to do is start hiring other coaches to support that so you can focus on growing the business mm -hmm. and do things where it's, you know, memory referrals, following with your cancellations, over servicing your members. And once we start doing those things, you see the bottom line start to grow. But if you're just coaching all day at your gym, it's really hard to offer a premium product and to grow your business because you're just in it all the time. Sure. As a consummate learner that you are, constantly reading, studying, talking with other people, throughout the, this weekend, what's one thing that you've taken away that the gym community you know, has, has kind of imparted knowledge on you? Well, I think the idea is, is that when we have all these guys come here, it requires us to step our game up. Our team gets fired up because they see all these guys in the feedback. And I think in the nutshell, what I'm hearing from them and things that I could do is constantly reflect on are we really providing the best product we can to the collective gyms, which will then in part, are we really providing the best programming plans for our own gyms? Like if we get feedback and it's working for them, well then that's a good thing. But if there's ways that we could tweak it to help them, they could probably tweak it to help us as well. So we have locations all over the world. So just receiving feedback on what's working, what's not from a large group of people really helps us decide where's our vision for the future going to be. And that's been really helpful. So you've been in this business 10 or 11 years now, right? Uh, Owning a gym? Yeah, since 08, so almost 12 years. Almost 12 years. So gym ownership in the CrossFit affiliate community has gone through a lot of trends in that, in that time. What is one trend that you think you're seeing right now that is kind of new and that's happening and you're seeing it implemented in a lot of the gyms across the US and, and globally? Well, I think you see some of these gym owners have been in business three, five, seven years and they're stuck. So they start using things that are gonna be like a high volume lead generators. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them out there. But the problem is, is that if they do these high volume lead generators, they get a hundred new leads. If they don't have the systems and the process to follow up with them effectively, introduce them effectively, onboard them effectively, have a front desk procedures so that they're greeted effectively, all these leads they just paid for are not gonna be optimized. And so I think that those owners who are seeking out these other things outside 
to help them with their business before they do any of that, before they spend any money, what are they doing without spending any money to tighten up the ship to where they have their front desk dialed in, they have their onboarding process clean and simple, they're answering their phone, they're answering their email, low hanging fruit, and then you can decide if you wanna do these other things. Sure. Sure. So do the fundamentals right before you bring on 20 new members and continue to do it. Well, and less, learn how to talk about right. your business, right? So yeah. if you don't actively go out there and sell your business, like talk to other people about it, what makes you think when you pay $1,000 or $10,000 to get these leads, you're gonna be able to talk about it. Sure. Start off without paying for anything and go learn how to talk to people at Starbucks about your business so that when people do call that you paid for, you have a better chance of actually getting them in board. All right, last question. 12 years ago, you were a young, wide-eyed gym <laughs> entrepreneur. If, if the Jason Kalipa were here today deciding he was gonna start his first gym, what would be uh, a couple pieces of advice you'd tell that uh, new, brand new gym owner? He hasn't signed a lease yet. He's just affiliated. He's just decided what he wants to do. What, what advice would you give that, that person? Stop. Stop. You know, why do you want to go into business? What makes you believe you're going to be good at this business? And remind yourself every single day that it's not a hobby. It's your career. It's your business. And you have an obligation to strive for improvements every single day, never getting comfortable and provide for my family and as many families as possible. I would just remind myself that from day one. And then once we make the decision, then go for it. But, but it's not a hobby. It is a business and it's what you're trying to create your own trajectory, your career path. And that comes with a lot of risk and liability. Just recognize that before you take those steps and educate yourself as much as you can, like going to school before you sign your lease, go find other gyms, go learn what they do. Take what you like, take it, take what you don't like about it and leave it behind. But don't do that once you start your business because you're already on the hook for rent. Go to school before you sign that deal as much as you can. Awesome. You know, for a lot of years, I used to ride the elliptical with the owner of the gym that I used to work at. I learned so much before I inked a deal. That was very valuable. Okay, awesome. All right, so we've just spent two days here with the NC Fit Collective Summit. Where can people find more about what you guys are doing and, and follow you? I mean, you can go check out Jason Kalipa. I have links for NC Fit Collective, with NC Fit underscore collective on Instagram. You go to NC Fit Collective on uh, website.fit and go to nc.fit. There's a number of different places. And uh, we have private groups for our members and we're really just trying to share what we use in our locations, other gym owners, and trying to raise the bar, man. Awesome. Well, thank you for a few minutes. We'll see Deal. you again.